In this video, we will look at a few examples of three-dimensional trigonometry problems. And by doing so, we will also uh, review primary trigonometric ratios, sine law, and cosine law from grade 10. Uh, now, this one's actually a question out of the textbook. It's uh, question 3a from section 5.8. And looking at this picture, uh, we notice that there's something funny going on here at point F because these symbols are meant to represent 90 degree angles. Okay, so we know that this angle is 90 degrees and this angle is 90 degrees. But they don't look like they're 90 degree angles. And that's because this diagram is actually drawn in three dimensions. So picture uh, having two pieces of paper that are cut into triangular shapes, uh, right triangles in fact, and put those two triangles together along one side and set the bottom edges on a tabletop, so corners or vertices E, F, and G are all sitting on the table, uh, and uh, vertex D here is up in the air above the table. Okay, so sometimes it might actually help to make a model out of paper or out of other materials uh, in order to help you better see what's going on in the problem. Okay, so what we want to do here is solve for the unknown value x. Okay. Now, if we look at triangle DFG here, uh, right now we don't have enough information to solve for uh, side length X. Uh, so what we might want to do is use triangle DEF first uh, in order to solve for this common side length. So let's call that maybe H for height. Uh, we can solve for that common side length and then use that side length as part of triangle DFG in order to solve for side length X. Okay, so in triangle DEF, okay, uh, let's maybe actually draw that triangle separately so we can take a closer look at it. Okay, so here's D, E, and F is the 90 degree angle. Uh, we're solving for H. We have this angle measurement here, which is 35 degrees, and we know that this side length is 15 centimeters. Okay, so based on this reference angle of 35 degrees, uh, the H is the opposite side to that, and the 15 is the adjacent. So the ratio that we want to use is tangent. We want tangent of angle 35 degrees equal to opposite over adjacent, so H over 15, which means that H is equal to 15 times tangent 35 degrees. And if we type that into our calculator, uh, so we've got 35 tangent, and then multiply that by 15. We get that H is about 10.5. Now, because we're going to be using that calculation for H in another calculation, uh, we might want to keep more decimal places than just one. So maybe we'll put 10.503113. This way, we're keeping a little bit more accuracy uh, in terms of getting our final answer. Okay. So now we have this measurement for H. We know that H is about 10.5. And uh, so now we can use that H measurement in triangle DFG. So let's draw it, that triangle. Okay. Triangle DFG. Angle F, again, is the right angle. Uh, we know that this angle is 45 degrees. This one is the one we just solved for, so that's 10.5 approximately. So we're going to use this number in our calculations. Uh, and we want to solve for side length x. Okay, so based on this reference angle of 45 degrees, 10.5 is the opposite, and x is the hypotenuse. Uh, and so we want to use the sine ratio. So the sine of 45 degrees is equal to... 10.5 over x. And so rearranging, we get that x is equal to 10.5 divided by sine of 45 degrees. And then we use our calculator to figure out the value of x. Okay, and so we get 10.5 divided by the sine of 45. We get about 
eight, four, nine, or if this is our final answer and we want to round to one decimal place, it would be 14.8. Okay. Now, because the units here were centimeters, we know that X is also in centimeters. All right, here's another three-dimensional question. Uh, Juliet is standing on an eight meter tall balcony. Romeo is on the ground to the left of the balcony, and he is looking up at Juliet at an angle of elevation of 38 degrees. Paris, uh, who's another suitor for Juliet, is on the ground to the right of the balcony, uh, and he's looking up at Juliet at an angle of elevation of 30 degrees. If the angle at the base of the balcony between Romeo and Paris is 105 degrees, how far apart are Romeo and Paris to the nearest tenth of a meter? So right now, this is a lot of information. We want to kind of break this down into chunks in order to draw a picture that goes with this scenario. So we're going to start with Juliet uh, standing at the top of an eight meter balcony. So let's draw, this is the eight meters, and Juliet is on top of that eight meter balcony. Uh, so this would be our ground level then here. Uh, Romeo is on the ground somewhere to the uh, left of the balcony. So Romeo is somewhere over here. Uh, and he's looking up at Juliet. So his line of sight here. Uh, there's an angle of elevation of 38 degrees. So if this is the ground level, I we're making the assumption that that balcony is built at a 90 degree angle to the ground uh, and his angle of elevation of his line of sight is 38 degrees. Paris is somewhere to the right of Juliet uh, and he's looking up at the top of the balcony at an angle of elevation of 30 degrees. So again we can draw, uh, safely assume that the balcony is built at a 90 degree angle to the ground and Paris's angle of elevation here is 30 degrees. We're also told that the angle at the base of the balcony, so the base of the balcony is here, the angle at the base of the balcony between Romeo and Paris, that would be this angle, is 105 degrees. How far apart are Romeo and Paris to the nearest tenth of a meter? All right, so I've just drawn this diagram a little bit bigger. Uh, now, this is the distance that we're looking for, the distance between Romeo and Paris. So let's call that distance X. So we have this three-dimensional scenario. Okay, Romeo and Paris are both looking up at Juliet standing on top of the eight-meter balcony. And this was the information that we got based on the question. So now we want to look at how can we possibly solve for the length X. Well, if we look at the triangle that X is a part of, here we can label bottom, uh, let's call this point here B for the base of the balcony. Uh, so if we look at this triangle RBP, uh, we don't have enough information right now in order to solve for uh, side X because all we have in that triangle is the measurement of angle B, which is 105 degrees. So we have to start with one of the other triangles here. Now we have that this height uh, of the balcony is eight meters, and that height actually belongs to both triangle JRB and triangle JPB. Uh, and so we can use that eight meters as uh, a side length for either of those two triangles. Uh, so what we might wanna do is maybe look at triangle JRB uh, and using the side length of eight and the angle of 38 degrees, we could solve for uh, side RB, okay, we could get that unknown. If we could do the same for triangle JPB and get the length of this side, then we would have enough information in the triangle on the ground in order to solve for side length X, okay? So let's start by solving for side length RB in the triangle on the left here, okay? So for the angle 38 degrees, we've got the opposite side, which is eight, and we wanna solve for the adjacent. So we're gonna use the tangent ratio there. So the tangent of 38 degrees is equal to eight over side RB. And so side RB equal to eight divided by 
tangent of 38 degrees. Okay, so on our calculator. Eight divided by tangent of 38 degrees. That gives us about 10.24. And that's in meters. Uh, and then we can do the same thing or something similar to solve for uh, side BP over here. And um, so that would be tangent of angle 30 equal to 8 over BP. And so side length BP is going to be 8 over tangent of 30 degrees. And so BP, using our calculator, 8 divided by the tangent of 30 that's about 13.86. Okay. So we now have those two side lengths and the angle between them. We can use cosine law in order to solve for side length x here. So there we'll have x squared is equal to 13.86 squared plus 10.24 squared minus 2 times 13.86. Get rid of some of this extra stuff in here. Times 10.24 times the cosine of 105 degrees. And so the actual value of x there instead of x squared uh, will be the square root of all of that. And using our calculator, that's 13.86 squared plus 10.24 equals, and then we want the square root of that answer. we get about 19.25. Okay. So then we can say that we know Romeo and Paris are about 19.25 meters apart where they're standing.